Hello and welcome to my magical portrait tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be explaining how to add spellbinding magical effects to your portrait. I'll be talking about the composition, subject matter, and all the different Clip Studio tricks and tips that you can use to enhance your portrait. Here I'm going to skip the basics of how to paint a face and hands. As you can see, I start with the color sketch already completed, and the first part of this video will be sped up around 40 times normal speed, and later I will slow it down to explain all the magical effects in more detail. To start with, I decided on a horizontal composition simply because this was going to be a video tutorial and I let that guide the rest of my thinking in how I was going to place a subject and what I was going to do with the hair and everything. Having a horizontal composition tends to exaggerate the horizontal elements. In this case, I really went all out with the hair and I decided to make it stand out as much as possible. I also went with the mostly symmetrical composition to give a sense of stability, peace, and tranquility. For many people, 2020 has been a really rough year, um, in some ways, myself included, and I really wanted to do something uplifting for this piece. I added a lot of curves to help with the composition, to help emphasize the tranquility, tranquility and harmony. This is true for the clothing and the accessories as well. Because all of these things agree with the main idea of the composition, it amplifies the effect. For this piece, if I wanted to add some straight lines, I would have had to have a really good reason for that. Sometimes when I paint, I like to experiment with several different color schemes, but for this one, I had a really good idea of what I wanted out of the color already. Other than the hair and all the other magical glowing things, I wanted the center of the piece to feature a magical gemstone, and I was sure that I wanted this gemstone to be some sort of opal, iridescent quartz, basically a lot of pinks, blues, pastel colors, so I already, already had that in mind, and I didn't really need to try out different color schemes here. I decided to center the character around this crystal, and given that I wanted a lot of things to glow, having a dark environment overall would suit this image really well. So I decided on a pretty natural night bluish color for the background to support this feeling of tranquility. I definitely could have chosen a more magical or more out there color for the background, but I thought the natural blue really enhanced the feeling and didn't distract too much from the character, which was supposed to be the main focus of this piece. Given that I already had a clear direction for the lighting and composition for this piece, I decided to paint most of the details in without strong lighting. It's not always necessary to work like this to separate the strong lighting and the ambient lighting, but for this piece, it really helped me stay organized, and it also helps me be able to experiment with the painting and the lighting separately. So in this case, it was a pretty good idea to separate it as much as possible while still keeping true to my original vision. Painting the light separately lets me focus on just the lighting, experiment with it, and make mistakes in the piece, in this piece where lighting is extremely important. So as a result, most of the details at this level are rendered with a soft frontal light, which is not super interesting. And then at the end, after I add in all the interesting lighting, I will go back and fix all the little details that I missed. If you're curious about how I'm able to draw the hands, there's no special tricks for this. Hands are really difficult. So for me, I often take a selfie with a webcam and use that as a reference for the hands. I use this method for literally every time I need to draw hands pretty much, and it's a lot less embarrassing than asking a friend to take a picture of you in a weird pose. At this point, I start sketching in the light. This is just a really rough draft of what the final that I plan on for the lighting, and since the lighting and effect is really important, I want to experiment with it before I paint it in for real. I use an add glow layer for this, but you can experiment with which add layer or dodge layer to use specifically since they all have different results and it really depends on what you need specifically for your piece. 
This whole step is done on a separate layer and I try to do this as quickly as possible, really zooming out, not focusing on details. And since we're doing a magical portrait here, it's really important to have everything glow for no reason at all. So I start adding glowing things pretty liberally. As long as it works with the composition, I add a bit of glow there. For this piece, I'm defining the glow area as the gem and the backside of the hair. This has the benefit of hi highlighting the magical floating hair, which I really want to be an important part of this piece, and the gem, which I want to be the other important part of this piece. And these lights pr also provide emphasis that enhances the central focal point of the hands and the face as well. In the end, I use the lighting to emphasize parts of the image that I would most like the viewer to appreciate. After sketching in the light, the next step is actually to clean it up and make it fit the existing image. Sadly, this takes way longer than simply sketching in the light, but for a painting to look polished, it's a really important step. The key to make something look glowing is a mixture of hard and soft light. The actual part that's glowing needs to be very, very bright, and then you want to add like a little soft halo of light around it. You also need to make sure that your base is dark enough. If you look at the image from before I start the lighting, um, the valleys were actually quite dark. If you use a color picker, you'll notice that they tend to fall below middle gray towards the lower half of the range of colors available. I reserve the higher range for only the glowing elements, and that tends to help make it look like it's really glowing. After I paint in some of the more solid areas of glow, I go over these areas with a soft airbrush. Think about how the light shines through materials such as hair and cloth. Pay attention to when it's partially blocked, which means it'll partially shine through, and this will help your piece really look three-dimensional, more lively, and just really beautiful overall. We all know that when you hold your hand up to the sun, it looks super red, and similar phenomena happen with hair and some colors of cloth. I won't get too technical here, but it's important to look at references for these and incorporate them into your painting, and these are things that will really make your painting stand out. At this stage, I want the lighting to be really clear when I look at the picture from a mostly zoomed out perspective, and later I will go in, back in and fix all the details. It's also important to consider how this extremely bright light affects the rest of the scene. The skin will be lit by this glowing lighting, the metal, the cloth as well, and the light in the hair spreads out throughout the rest of the hair. Alongside the light, I add some additional shadows based on these new light sources. I use an overlay layer with a dark gray selected to shade places where I don't think the light affects as much. This adds contrast to the overall image and helps me emphasize the part of the image that I want the viewer to look at. Once I'm happy with how the lighting's coming along, I decide it's time to start detailing the painting. I use a default airbrush to add some stars to the background. For the face, I zoom in and brush on some sparkle with a different airbrush. I do all of this on the glow dodge or add glow layer to make sure it brightens up the image and looks like it's sparkly. And then I also use these layers to add some more strong light on the face that comes from the lighting that I've added to the image with the hair and the gem. Once I'm satisfied, I repeat a similar process for the body and a little on the cloth as well. Here I take quite a while to clean up the details such as lines and color that aren't where they should be. There's not too much to explain here, it's mostly something that comes from experience. Even if a painting like this is able to grab someone's attention immediately, you do want there to be a little more to look at over time, and I think that's where all the details come in. 
This part is actually pretty boring and doesn't require a lot of active thinking, more just passive experience, so I usually watch a show or listen to a podcast while doing it. At this point, the image is pretty much done, and all I want to do is add some finishing touches. I downloaded a really nice brush from Clip Studio Resources. It has a rainbow pattern on it to give it an iridescent look, and I use the radial blur effect to make it look like it's coming from the center of the image. I'd like to give a shout out to Clip Studio Paint for commissioning this video tutorial. If you prefer to read it in text form, or use it as reference, you can find a link to it in the description. Please share this video if you find it interesting, and subscribe for hopefully more future video tutorials and walkthroughs when I actually find the time. Thank you so much for watching!